On Tuesday, his family, that is today, uh, met the Prime Minister Manmohan Singh in Parliament and uh, also along with them, uh, Congress MP Sanjay Nirupam joining the family. Now, the Prime Minister says he has assured them that his government will do all it can to secure Captain Sunil James' release. The family, as we all know, is mourning the death of their 11-month-old infant and had approached the Indian government for help in securing Captain James' release to attend his son's funeral. The infant's body is in a morgue in, in Mumbai. Uh, Captain James was arrested by officials in Togo this summer on claims that he aided a pirate attack on his own ship. In the studio with us right now is Captain James's family, his uh, brother-in-law Rakesh, uh, his sister-in-law Aditi, uh, his sister-in-law uh, Avni and his wife Aditi. We want to thank you for, for joining Headlines today and of course upon our condolences for what you've been going through for the past few months, especially the last few weeks. Uh, I, want to, I want to start with you and, and, and particularly the days following his arrest in Togo. Uh, what was communicated to you back then? Uh, the minute we got to know on 30 July that he is also taken in under arrest, we approached their office, we approached the DG Shipping which is the governing body for the Virgin Navy, we approached the MEA also and they said that we are taking appropriate measures and have patience. Uh, by the time we got to know what the charges were, one, one and a half months had gone. Okay, by one and a half, two months only we got to know what the charges were. Then we started running from pillar to post, to DG Shipping Office, a joint DG, then we met uh, various MEA people, we met to press at that time. So even those two, three months were quite harrowing. Then my husband Rakesh, he himself yeah. said that things are not moving in the right direction. Let me myself take some leaves and he went for a month in Togo, uh, Africa. Yeah. So that's how we started the whole process. So that He went there and he spoke to everyone. He hired a lawyer and yeah. then we got some leeway as to what is actually happening there. And, and, and when you went to Togo, there, was there assistance from the Indian government at the time and did, were they forthcoming? Because I know the Indian, the Indian government doesn't have a permanent mission there. They have a representative flying in from Ghana for this. For the 25 days that I spent in Togo, I didn't for once meet uh, any government representative whatsoever. So yeah. absolutely no help there. And, and, and uh, the kind of legal help that you're getting now, has that changed since you've approached the government once again? Or uh, Yes, the, the government has been able to get two of our consular officers from Ghana, mm -hmm. restationed at uh, Togo right now. Uh, I believe there is one officer there currently. He's the second secretary uh, for the Indian High Commission. Uh, the second officer may be en route, uh, that's something that will happen probably sometime in the very near future. But th those are recent developments, that is all the after last the few second, weeks rather than no, not even the last few weeks, that's just literally the last week after my okay. nephew passed away. Yeah. Uh, you met the Prime Minister today ma'am and, and he's promised you assistance to try and bring Captain James back. Uh, are you hopeful now that, that at least there's some momentum on this in the past week? I am hopeful. I mean, I look up to the Prime Minister. We as a common man can look up to him. He is the one who can help us in such situations. And he had assured us today that he will do his best to get Sunil back. Maybe not permanently because of the judicial process there, but at least temporarily, yes. He will try his level best to get him back at the earliest. So I am little hopeful. What's, what is Captain James saying through all this and particularly in the past week? How, how has he been reacting? He, I haven't spoken much to him but as whatever I speak to him, he's too devastated. He yeah. is shocked basically. He doesn't know how to react. He cries, he's been crying, he's, he's in pain. He just needs to come back and he wants to see his son for one last time. That's what he wants. He doesn't expect anything more than that. We, we understand that, uh, that he had spent about four months with him before he had to set sail again. Three months, yes. Three months. It was, what, was that, what was that time like? Because it, as a new father, it must have been an incredible moment for him. It was superb. I mean, Sunil pampered him so much. We didn't have a servant for anything. From day one, Sunil was the one who bathed him from day one. Mm -hmm. He took care of him. Everything, he took care of every small things that my baby wanted. He was too attached. He was too pampered by him. And suddenly this thing is shocking for all of us. And Sunil is devastated. He doesn't even know how to react. You know, I want to come to the charges that have been brought against Captain James because t to my mind it, it seems incredible that a man docks a ship in, in an unknown port, reports a piracy attack on his ship and then is arrested on claims that he arrested the, that he assisted those pirates. Uh, what, does, does the government of Togo have any evidence or have they presented you with any evidence or the lawyers with any evidence? No. 
Absolutely none. Mm -hmm. And that's why the initial charge of abetment to piracy was dropped while I was there in Togo, mid-October, actually early October. Uh, for the lack of evidence, there's absolutely nothing to support those charges. See, everything right now that is being held against uh, Sunil is basic, basic heresy. Mm -hmm. Circumstantial, someone said something to someone, a friend of a friend of a friend said something, so maybe there's something behind it. Okay. So even the feedback that I get from the public prosecutor there is that we'd like to detain all of these Indians in the hope that the truth manifests itself. How does that even begin to sound right? Because b presumably they would have interrogated them, they would have questioned them and then said, okay, we find no evidence against you. Uh, sorry yeah. about that, you know, it's on your way. To me, in my mind, it's black and white. You either have the evidence, yeah. something did go wrong, or you don't. Mm. Sitting around waiting months and months in the hope and prayer that something does manifest, just I, I want to bring our correspondent Rishika in uh, right now. Rishika, uh, you've been speaking to government officials. What have they been telling you about this case? Well, as of today, after Captain James' family has in fact met with the Prime Minister, things are looking up. The Prime Minister himself has assured the family full diplomatic support from the Indian government. Uh, the response hasn't been very heartening in the past five months. Um, as uh, Captain James' family sitting with you would be telling you that they've uh, it, it, it's been a tough journey for them. They've run pillar to post, first with a little baby, uh, you know, who was with them. And with, with all of that going on, uh, they, they did sort of knock on every door but didn't really get any response except for, you know, authorities telling them to be patient and that things would work out. Um, but of course, after the very sad demise of their little baby, things have gotten, uh, you know, things have come more into the public do domain. The media stepped in in a really big way to tell their story. So all these things are also putting pressure on the establishment to act, uh, to, you know, uh, to, 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 to sort of negotiate with the authorities there to ask them on what grounds they've detained uh, uh, Captain James for so long, what is the evidence that they in fact have in this case. Uh, so all of those things, and of course, uh, the meeting with the Prime Minister today, the highest, uh, you know, the highest level of political intervention that has been sought in this case. We're really hopeful uh, that, that things will move fast from now on. Thanks, Rishika, for that. Uh, I want to come back to the studio now. Um, the, the, there, there has been a tremendous outpouring of support, particularly in the past week. But what was it like f since July, since late July, when, when the news first broke of, of his arrest uh, and events leading up to the past week? Has, who, who helped you? Who supported you? Who came forward? I think uh, the first the first month we were, we were pretty headless. We didn't know what's happening, so we obviously went firstly to the people who employed him, his employers, yeah. the the person who the agency and the owners of the company, and the this DG is a shipping. British company, I believe. Yes, yes. and the DG shipping because that's a governing body. The yeah. first month they just told us no, wait, have patience, nothing. I must tell you, in the first month they did get the ship out. So the, so the place where the incident happened was not there, yeah. but Sunil was still incarcerated. Then we thought that things are not moving as at the pace that they should. So we, we were not getting even answers. Uh, then we finally went to, um, I remember last week of August, first week of September, we approached the media. We did do a small burst in the media and media did again come forthright even at that time. Um, but nobody in, so MEA, uh, few people came and said, okay, yeah, we are aware of the situation, but nobody took the mantle on and nobody said, okay, we are fighting this battle. Nobody to the owners per se yeah. so then that's when he said no I'm gonna go to Togo and uh, see what's actually happening there because we didn't have anyone giving us the right answer including the uh, Commission embassy in Togo did, did you have to support yourself on that trip or did, yes. did the company provide any help on no. that I'm sorry no uh, that was just family only okay and, and, and in terms of official support on the trip, once again, there was no help. There was no. nobody to arrange a visit for you. You had to do it all by yourself. No, I bought myself a ticket. I packed my bags. I flew to Togo. I booked myself into a hotel there. I met a few of the locals there who could help me get around. Okay. I do not speak the language. Yeah. It's predominantly. It's French, Africa. French or Airway, yeah. one of the two. <coughs> I didn't know anyone there in Togo. I had no friends, no family, no one to fall back on. Uh, absolute stranger. Didn't know the roads, nothing at all whatsoever. So I developed a few contacts there. Uh, then after that, I went and met the judge, I met the prosecutor, I, met, I engaged a lawyer there. I was able to get visitation uh, yeah. authorization from the judge inspector himself so that I could go and visit Sunil. 
quite a... Uh, I'm being told I have to take a break, but I want you to have the final word over here because you've met the Prime Minister today. Um, what, what would you like to leave the government with, with a message before you head back to Mumbai? I'd just like to tell the government, please understand my situation. My baby is waiting here for nine days. His father has not seen him for the past nine months. This is his last chance to see his baby. Don't take the chance away from him. Uh, we, we wish for your strength in, in, in this time because uh, really it's, it's a story that, that's difficult beyond words to comprehend. We thank you for coming here and sharing your story. Thank you so much.